Good afternoon you legends, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for clicking that button and joining me for this video, hope you're all well. Now guys, we're actually out doing a foraging video today which will be uploaded to the channel in the very near future, but the video you are about to watch was a segment taken from my last video, the survival camp with the primitive bushcraft shelter. I took this from the final cut because the video would have been too long, but this is mainly for the new legends, you guys that have jumped on board very recently on the channel, this will give you some insight as to some of the gear I've used in my 14 year journey of bushcraft and the stuff I still use today. So if this content sounds like it might be of interest to you, stick around and check out the gears and tools I've used over a 14 year span. Hope you enjoy the video, see you soon. Right, before we go any further with the video, let's do a quick kit rundown because after all this is the kit that is going to get me through the night, hopefully. So first of all, the pack is the Carrymore Sabre SF45. This is a military ruck and this is my oldest surviving uh, rucksack. This I picked up in, I think it was 2012. It has lasted all of that time and it hasn't missed a stitch. Um, as you know, if you do follow the channel or if you're new, I have recently swapped this out for the Savota 393 saddle sack. On top of this, on the lid, we have the Savota roll mat. This is the only way this pack can accommodate this roll mat which is one of its downsides it does have loops on the bottom of the pack but they're just not um, wide enough to hold this so I will be sleeping on the Savota mat again bomb proof bit of kit from the company Savota on the side of the bag is my faithful Grandfather's Brooks small forest axe I picked this up in I remember to the day 2014 again this is one of my most coveted pieces of kit and this will remain with me until my last dying breath and then it'll end up on a car boot somewhere in Wales or something you never know but yeah fantastic tool all round the pack pretty much um, no molly webbing on it there's a couple of elasticated loops where you can hang a, an axe a couple of um, webbing loops on the front we do have the additional side pockets on this these are 12 litres each the another downside to this pack is when it is fully loaded it is absolutely mahoosive lengthways um, it's really really wide and when you're trying to get through styles and them sort of things you do have to dismount the pack to get through and then put it back on which again a bit of a downside going inside the pack so this is going to include my oldest cut kit my oldest sleep kit my oldest uh, woodworking tools things like that now going into it so my oldest surviving saw is the Agawa Canyon Boreal 21 from Agawa Canyon. This is a 21 inch folding bow saw. Um, this again is probably as old as the axe and I have only just recently in the last year um, replaced the blade. But these are tremendous saws again. Um, but again this has been recently, I wouldn't say replaced, but I have got another saw that accompanies this and I can switch between the both. I do have now the uh, silky Outback Big Boy, which is again an absolutely fantastic saw. But going with the theme of the oldest gear, this is my oldest surviving saw. My oldest surviving air mat, and I have had this an extremely, extremely long time, probably older than the axe and the saw. This is the Thermareth Pro Light. Um, I think this is the this is the three quarter length mat. It's only a very very thin mat. I think it's about an inch very uncomfortable to sleep on I don't know why I'm doing this to myself tonight and uh, actually Paul Kirtley still uses this mat to this day as far as I know with his ultralight uh, bushcraft camp setup I don't know how he sleeps on this he's over six foot he's probably not as heavy as me but bloody hell you will wake up with arthritis after sleeping on this mat even with the inch foam cushioning from the um, Savossa as well so again this is going to be a very very uncomfortable night for me um, so please do hit that like and subscribe button. Right, my oldest sleep system. So first off we have the Alp Kit Hunker Bivy Bag. I can honestly say I think this has been used around three, four times since I've had it. And this again is as old as the axe. Um, but I've kept it, I don't know what, for what reason, probably. If anyone else wanted to come camping, I'd have spare bivy there. It's not very wide, they do the Unka, the Unka XL, which I should have gone for, but this is very, very constricting when you're wearing it, so I just wear it around the waist, which is what I will be doing tonight. 
Inside we have my oldest surviving sleeping bag, which is way past its best. This is the mountain equipment, can't remember its name, Starlight 2. And again, this is as old as the axe, probably older. And I picked this up off my only um, outdoor sort of bushcraft hiking shop on my high street. It has not been there for many, many years now. So, um, yeah, the mountain equipment Starlight 2. It is a polar fleece um, kind of thing. And it did have a temperature rating of extreme 17, transition of 2, and comfort of plus 3. I think I'm going to need extra layers tonight. Hence why I'm wearing the smock. Um, these are pretty old now, I'd say around 5 or 6 years old, the Trangia Green 330ml um, meth bottles, alcohol fuel bottles, these are fantastic, highly recommend if you do use alcohol stoves you pick one or two of these up, I use one for the meths and I use one for my paraffin for the lanterns, I'll just throw that there, now guys this, oh my oldest surviving knife, this is my absolutely truly beloved, I have had knives past this and I've got rid of them and kept this. This is the Mora Bushcraft Black. This again will never part ways from me. Um, I did a review on the first channel of this years ago again when I picked the axe up. Um, this was my first proper bushcraft knife at that time and I demonstrated battening through a solid oak log with this. Bearing in mind this knife is not a full tang knife although it is a full three quarters. I do believe that tang comes right back to the handle here. But, um, phenomenal knife, carbon steel, razor sharp, um, and I trust I trust my life with that. To be honest, it is a great knife. I've, I've quartered squirrel, um, pigeon, all sorts with that. A fantastic bushcraft knife. This is my solo pot, 1800 billy pot or bush pot. I have never looked past replacing this for a stainless steel variant. Anyway. Um, I have looked for a titanium variant um, to add to an ultralight kit or cut kit but um, nothing has been produced with the same sort of dimensions and build as this so this is an absolutely awesome awesome pot we have a an adjustable bail arm at the top which locks this is uh, detachable as well for storage a rubber coated locking handle for the lid and we have butterfly handles on the back for easy pouring um, we do have a loose that this one it's drove me mad all them years ever since it was brand new that just that one it, it's pet my head no end but again it's a fantastic pot so inside of this pot and this one guys may shock you a little bit um, but again for you guys that have followed the channel again for the longest time you'll recognize this straight off the bat I'm sure followers like uh, Wall and Tony Edens and all you other guys that have tremendously supported me um, on the channel all them years ago. So this is the Avenue Appalachian Titanium Kit. This um, was an absolutely ridiculous expensive piece of kit when I bought it um, many moons ago, around 2014 again. Um, and this retails still to this day £150. Oh, ho, ho. £150. It is a 550 mil. It is a 500 mil titanium sort of kettle pot with the spout. Um, a nice tight fitting lid. And inside, this is a, an all in one um, cook stove. Again, absolutely lightweight, no weight in that at all. And it just goes to show, you know, you buy tit titanium gear, it's going to last you. This is the actual stove. So inside there we have a burner. This is the Avenue DX stove, I believe. And um, this is a three-part stove. So in there we have the alcohol stove. Um, together, you can use this for um, biomass, for burning small twigs, which doesn't really work. It's not fantastic. And then we have the power plate, which you can put in there and use Esbit tablets in there or solid fuel tabs and then boil your water on top of there as well. Absolutely phenomenal, fantastic stove, no working parts, nothing to go wrong and the boil time on this isn't far off a gas powered um, rocket stove 
it, it boils your water within under four minutes. Absolutely fantastic. But again, £150, very, very expensive bit of kit. Not something I'd buy again, but at the time, um, I have no excuse. I just wanted it, so I bought it. As you do. All fits very nicely inside that pot. And I think the full kit comes in at... Uh, I'm going to say less than probably 250 grams. Fantastic um, cook, cook, cook pot. Guys, that is, I think, pretty much it. Well, ladies and gents, if you made it to the end of the video, first of all, thank you very much for your time. It's very much appreciated. Second of all, I hope you did enjoy the video. That was just a quick show and tell of some of the gear and tools I used in that camp, which I will put up here in a card. You can go check that video out yourself. Well, until the next one, guys, you stay safe, and as always, stay crafty. See you again, guys. Bye-bye.